All right. Hey, happy Wednesday, hacksters. Today we have an exciting package in the room. Uh, this is from Group Gets, uh, and it was part of a partnership that we did with them. Uh, well, we're doing with them called Hackster Launch, which you can find at hackster.io slash launch. Uh, there's all these links in the description to the video if you want to catch up on any of these things or click around. Anyway, so uh, let's take a look at the site really quick. We did an article on this about seven months ago. Tom Fleet gave us the rundown. And this is a really excellent article uh, that tells you about, like, for example, why there's these wiggly lines on here and stuff. Oh, sorry for the loud noises, but at least our audio is working today. Um, we have some links to previous projects that Greg has done. And let's just get this out of the box. Forget it. Yeah. Uh, we'll take a look at the website later. I'm excited uh, to unbox this boy. So one thing that I'm curious about is that the company name that Orange Crab is released under is Good Stuff Department. And Greg uh, is the person who runs it. And I kind of wonder if his middle initial is S because then it would be GSD, uh, Greg Devil. Who knows? Maybe it's Greg Superman Devil. I'll have to have him on for an interview and ask. <laughs> do, do, do. There we go. Urgh. Hmm. Maybe this is the wrong side of the box to open. Oh, it goes like this. Da, 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 da. Oh no! Wow, it's really, it's really tight in there somehow. Ah, oh, there we go. Alrighty. Oh, we get some stickers. Group gets hack minimum order requirements. Ha <laughs> ha! Great. Yes, uh, because a lot of the time, I mean, that's the whole point of group gets and Kickstarter and pro platforms like this is that it's often hard to get um, projects done, given that uh, manufacturers and distributors often only want to give you sell you things in like a certain amount uh, that can be in the thousands. And so, by buying these things, you actually help them get made in the first place. Nice recyclable packaging here. Oh, look how cute it is. Learn more at orangecrab.gregdevil.com. Uh, Orange Crab. So this is the chip on here, the Lattice ECP5-25F. It is a Feather FPGA development board. What does that mean? So uh, Feather is a standard divide by, uh, <laughs> defined by Adafruit. It is a compact, uh, usually microcontroller development board uh, form factor and an FPGA. Well, we'll get into that later, but uh, it stands for field programmable gate array. It sort of allows you to design your own chips, which may not be as efficient or like you know perfect as a custom designed chip and custom manufactured chip. But the key here is flexibility. So field programmable gate array, you can sort of uh, turn any of the pins into anything you want them to be, which is amazing. Um, yeah, so certified open source hardware is the sixth uh, piece of open source hardware certified out of Australia. And we'll look at that in a second. Oh, look, it's got little, uh, I maybe shouldn't show you that. Who knows? And then we have our wonderful logos down there. Designed in South Australia, manufactured in Reno, and then some specs. I'm assuming that this goes to that same URL. Nice packaging. Let's get this open. Ho, 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 ho. And here we go. As mentioned, Adafruit's feather form factor is quite compact. This does not come with headers solder on. Uh, but it does have a micro SD card slot. This is one of the, this thing has a ton of memory available. And the micro SD card slot uh, adds to that. It's ridiculous, kind of. So let's get this closer up. And here you see those really interesting little wiggles. And we'll come back to that later. Uh, it's a technique called meandering, according to Tom Fleet. And you have a LiPo charger, uh, not just a connector, but a charger. Uh, I love Adafruit. And I understand why they often don't build in LiPo chargers to their boards, even when they have a connector. I think it's because um, you can connect uh, you know, non-rechargeable battery packs to it, like double A's and triple A's and stuff. And you really don't want to accidentally charge one of those. So if you have a battery pl pack plugged in and you try to uh, 
you know, program the thing, then it's not going to try and charge those and cause a disaster. However, uh, I really love it when you do have those plugged in uh, or the charging circuit included because I like to use LiPos. Uh, they're rechargeable, they're convenient, and you can charge it while you're programming it. It just makes everything so much nicer for me. Uh, GSD, there we go again. Uh, you've got your lattice chip. Is that this board? Mm, yes. LFE5U-24F, 25F. Uh, and then you have all these pens available, which again, you can sort of turn into whatever you want. You've got a user programmable button. And also on here somewhere, it must be quite small because I don't quite see it, is an RGB LED. Let's see, on the bottom? Wouldn't be on the bottom, would it? This is a six layer board. This is incredible. Um, I guess we'll see. So I've loaded up the, oh, there it is. Uh, we, I've loaded up the example. Oh wait, no, that's the charging light. This must be the user programmable one. Haha, <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, let's take a look at the websites because I've loaded up some uh, an example that should get this thing blinking and uh, we can have a look at it. So yeah, we have Tom's article pulled up here and he goes through a ton of interesting stuff, not just about the orange crab itself, but about how it's put together. Um, look at this beautiful animation, probably from Greg. And then also you have insights into why it's so hard to design boards like this. Uh, for example, look at all the different signals that you need to route. It's ridiculous just to interface with the memory. Um, and an interesting thing I didn't know was that routing is further compounded by the need to length match grouped traces in order to meet the DDR3 bus speeds, which can top out at a throughput of I'm not actually sure. Oh, yeah. 1866 mega transfers per second. It's ridiculous. So you get this uh, design called the meandering path, uh, which, so uh, this was designed in KiCad. It's basically open source all the way down. And apparently, the PCB new feature in KiCad uses an XML based file, board file format, uh, which enables you to use a Python script that monitors the board file for the different lengths of your traces so that you can match them. Uh, what Tom says is that it's usually easiest to lengthen existing traces rather than trying to shave off length from already routed tracks. And so you get this meandering path situation, which as we saw a second ago, looks like this. And that's why you have all those little squigglies. Isn't that cool? Um, yeah. So let's go back to the website. This is, again, our article, which is linked below. Analog capabilities. Uh, yeah, so the feather form factor includes uh, six analog pins. However, there's only, a, I think, one available on the ECP5. And so they've done a little hack to give you all those input pins that you would expect from the feather form factor, which is pretty cool open source hardware, and then what you can do with it. So uh, there's a ton of resources linked from the group gets page where you can buy this. And uh, that links you to the GitHub pages page where Greg has a bunch more information. You've got your GitHub page over here um, with your example projects for, open for Orange Crab. And that's what I ended up using following the getting started tutorial on gregdevil.github.io, also linked below. Uh, I just followed this tool chain setup. And in a minute, I'm going to try and live do this Verilog example. Um, it's possible that there will be some issues we'll run into because my Mac has this these security settings that don't allow me to easily run um, outside software without verifying that it's safe. So that might be something that we run into. But we're going to try and get this uh, RGB LED blinking. It's going to be very exciting. Uh, on the group gets page, they explain what an FPGA is, which is very convenient if you're not sure what you would actually use this for. Um, again, yeah, so they actually have a list of why would you want an FPGA? Have you work, been working through a project, but then you need just one more UART or run out of timers or you're short on PWM or you don't have any more program space? Uh, all these re for all these reasons, you know, you might want to use an FPGA. Uh, you can easily reconfigure what the pins are doing, 
uh, and it gives you a lot of flexibility if you're trying to design a board, for example. Also, FPGAs um, are really fast because they, uh, let me uh, show you the board again. So FPGAs are, tend to be really fast for parallel processing because not everything has to go through the CPU. You can sort of wire up pins directly to each other with some logic. And that means that you can have multiple things going on at a time, like sensor readings and uh, results from that. And uh, I think that beeping will stop in a second. <laughs> And so it's really fast because not everything is trying to go through the same bottleneck. You've got all these processes that can run in parallel, which is super cool. And that's just a feature of FPGAs in general. Uh, so again, on this um, group get site, which is again linked in the description, you can find out more about why you would want an FPG in the first place. It is programmed differently to other uh, things that you might be used to if you're used to doing microcontrollers. So it does have a compact size. But uh, for example, uh, it's loaded with a USB-based DFU bootloader. So you're, you're able to uh, program in a couple of different ways. Hopefully soon, we'll have MicroPython and CircuitPython. I'm really excited about that, uh, because that would make it even more compatible with your existing Feather projects. Not only would you be able to use uh, existing Feather wings, which are like shields for the Feather, um, or code, maybe. Uh, yeah, you could, re you could reuse the code that you use for your other feathers. You can also use RISC-V firmware um, using the RISC-V GCC compiler and start programming the board. Uh, or you can use FPGA gateware. It's also fully compatible with Lattice's Diamond IDE. And again, it's fully open source. So it's created in KiCad, which is open source. It's certified open source itself. All the design files are available. It uses an open source bootloader, and it's fully compatible with open source PGA, FPGA toolchain and flow using Yosis, NextPNR, and Trellis. Um, so there isn't right now an active group buy for this, but uh, you can get it from the group get store for $129. We had a few questions about this. So yeah, uh, when there was a group buy previously, you could get it for $99. So if you're going from it for, from the store right now, it's 129, but you could try and hold out for another group buy and that would be good, a good option as well. Uh, so yeah, let's plug this in. Oh, before we do that, uh, Greg also has an example of getting Linux running on this thing, which is ridiculous. Linux on Litex, what? Uh, and that is linked, I think from the group gets page where you can run Linux on it, yes. Just hit this under example projects and you'll be taken to this. That's ridiculous. You can't do that, but apparently you can. <laughs> so, okay, time to plug it in and follow this getting started example. I've done the tool chain setup, I've downloaded the repo, I've made uh, run make on the uh, project and now we're going to plug it in. So let's take a look and do these side by side. Can I show you my terminal window? Yes. There we go. Nope. <laughs> I need the, the text to be big enough for you to see it. There we go. All right, so I've got this going on here. I'm going to plug it in. You've got your micro USB connector over here, so. And again, I've never done this because I just pulled it out of the box. So we'll see if it works on the first try. Ooh, oh, this is what I was afraid of. It's already got an example loaded on it. Uh, but we'll run through it anyway and see what we get out of the uh, terminal window when we do this. I'm going to hide this banner so we can see more of what's going on. Oh, doesn't actually cover anything up. OK, let's go. So I'm going to follow the tutorial and say, make DFU. That's all I have to do. Oh, wait, no. So there's one more thing I have to do here, which is that when I'm plugging it in, I have to have it in DFU mode so that I hold down the button and then plug it in and it should go into the proper bootloader mode. That looks like it's doing the same thing, but let's see what we get when we run make DFU. Oh, 
Yep, we're getting some uh, security issues. So let me. Uh... <sighs> okay, it's downloading. LED is still going. Oh, but it was doing orange for a while. Now it's doing a little white blinking fast thing. Ha 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 ha. Resetting USB to switch back to runtime mode. And there you have it. Uh, it's doing your little RGB blink example. Ooh, or is it? It's kind of flipping out on us here. Yeah, there we go. Let me get you a bit better of focus. Yeah! All right, so that's what it looks like when you flash this thing uh, from the terminal using the getting started example provided on Greg's website. <laughs> Someone asks if it is pre recorded. It is not pre recorded. I'm doing this live. <laughs> that's why I have to have all these little hiccups where I'm trying to make my security settings behave. Uh, but yeah, it really is that easy. This is not pre-recorded. I just pulled it out of the box, as you see. I just uh, plugged it in, and uh, all these word stumbles and random beeping interruptions, I promise you, are authentic. Let's see. All right, so there you have it. Uh, check out the link in the description below, again, for all of the resources mentioned, including the Hackster article, the group gets page, where you can buy it now, or you can hold out for another group buy. Be sure to check out Hackster launch as well, actually. We have a ton of really cool projects always being launched. Um, here we go. And that's just hackster.io slash launch. We recently did the at mega zero, which is a uh, an Arduino in the form factor of a Raspberry Pi zero. And you can find our video on that as well. There's other featured campaigns going on all the time. And yeah, as always, uh, you can find more on our blog, not just this article on the orange crab, but tons of other stuff every day. I'm going to, let's see, see if we have any final questions here. Again, the price is $139 if you get it right now, but, uh, or $129, but, you can also hold out for another group buy. Is this available in India? I am not sure, but you could uh, post a question to the uh, to Greg on Twitter, I'm sure, and you'd be able to find out or ask group gets directly who would be more in charge of that. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you have fun with this. Uh, I would love to see any projects that y'all have built with this because right now I know how to blink an LED, which is exciting, but FPGAs have so much promise and um, so many abilities that go beyond your standard microcontroller. You can run Linux on this thing, so what else can you do? Uh, I am still waiting to answer that question, but I'll keep it tucked away just in case I have an idea that requires reading and processing a bunch of information in a very short period of time. All right. Have a great rest of your Wednesday, if it still is where you are. Uh, we'll see you soon, and hack on.